Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am recording these fast and furious here in January 2023, and it has been a consistent delight. Um, speaking of consistent delights, I have another two-time guest coming back today. I have Rich Stefan with me today. Let me reintroduce you before I ask him about the new exciting things coming up in 2023 for him. Rich helps entrepreneurial-minded business owners that are not experiencing the growth, income, or time freedom they expected to discover and develop the fun Oops. they expected to discover, sorry, and develop the fundamentals that will enable them to build the business they originally envisioned. I lost a comma there, and you can see the importance of commas when you try to read stuff out loud. <laughs> His passion is to help business owners get back on track and in alignment with the energy and passion of their vision. Entrepreneurs wear many hats, as you well know, to start up their businesses. As a business grows, the juggling of those roles can cause the owner to live to work instead of the business providing the better quality of life they desired in the first place. As a result, business owners really lose the passion, inspiration, and momentum to grow towards their aspirations. This is where Rich's experience and expertise are the most beneficial and most impactful. Rich, thank you for wading through my stumbling, bumbling, rumbling reintroduction of your bio. I lost a couple commas in there, um, but I appreciate that you've come back for another conversation. I really enjoyed our first one, and I'm excited to talk to you again. Yeah, same here. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> so let, let's let's cut to the chase. Let's get to the real juicy stuff. You have a book coming out very, very soon, a book that you're co-authoring with a number of other luminaries in the field. So I'm just uh -huh. going to tee you up to talk about that. Tell me what this book's about. Tell me about the experience of writing it. Tell me anything you want to tell me about it. I'd love to hear. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting the way, the way it all started. Um, and be quite honest, the person that called me on the phone to ask me if I was possibly interested in talking about co-authoring a book. And I, he finished his statement and he says, and I said, I said, where did you find me to co-author a book? And he goes, well, I got your podcast on. And it was the last podcast that we did. He saw that podcast out there and he said, I really think that you would be a great co-author in this book. And at that point, I was pretty much dumbfounded, uh, but very appreciative. And so anyway, um, we kind of continued the process and uh, he said, you know, so, well, here's the situation. It says the, the people that are kind of, you know, forwarding this movement and that will be, uh, the you know, handling the forward and also co-authors in the book. And he listed their name. It was Jim Britt and Jim Lutz and then Les Brown. Hmm. Well, um, if you've been in the NL NLP world, neuro-linguistic neuro programming, you know Jim Br uh, Lutz for sure. Uh, Les Brown, people know him pretty much inside and out. And uh, he said, I'd like to have a call. And I go, okay, I'm kind of tentative about this, but uh, figuring it was going to be, you know, not, it was, I can't picture myself writing a book. Let's put it that way. Okay, so <laughs> if you're not writing a book, you're just writing a, a chapter in the book. You're going to be amongst other people within this. And it's all about the insights to personal development. And I said, okay, that sounds great. So we get on the next call and he says, the next call, just come with your your questions about what you your, you have so we can get those answered. He answered my first question. Then I asked my second question. And he says, can you hold on one second? I'm going to, okay, here we go. And who answered the phone? Les Brown. And I'm going, you got to be kidding me. And I'm sitting here on the phone talking to Les Brown about this book. And then next thing I add is that then Jim Lutz gets on the phone and he's talking about it. And then they give me their cell phone numbers and I'm going, this is unreal. But anyway, it was a great experience and it still actually is a very good experience because the, the book itself has not come out yet. It's supposed to come out in about another, about mid-February, um, but we've already got the covers for the book and each one of the co-authors in the book is has their own cover with them right next to Les Brown on the cover. And um, it's it's this is a a series of books, uh, and, and we're this is the eighteenth book in the series. And um, anyway, so um, it comes out, but they're now they're teaching us, you know, kind of how to put that out there to kind of get some interest levels going and whatever else. So it's been an education. It's, they've been extremely available and extremely helpful, and um, you know, got my chapter written and. That was an exercise I'll remember for a while, 
you know, it's only 3,000 words, but gosh, it took me, I don't know, 40 hours, you know, it's like, because I wanted everything to be like, right. And uh, <laughs> anyway, got it done. And, uh, but things are rolling along right, right away. And I actually um, have gotten a couple of speaking engagements um, as a result of people being aware of the fact that this book is coming out and they're using that to kind of, you know, help put it out there. So I have one in St. Louis. I have one that'll either be in Kansas city or Florida where they're, they're not decided quite yet. And so anyway, it's been a great experience. It's been a great experience. Man, that's, that's so cool. I just, I love how, how everything snowballed in a positive way a lot, of, like a, lot a lot of a lot of snowballing is often it's often used to to term about something like when it rains it pours in a yeah. negative way but this is one of those things where it's like a little spark seemed to seem to have lit the fire that's that's fantastic and it it speaks to i mean it's it's one of those simple truths that we know you just keep putting yourself out there just keep doing the work be available get on podcasts just kind of just be somewhere where people can see you and then if they if they like what you have to say, if they if they're if they're really picking up what you're putting down, they're gonna reach out. And you never know, you never know what's going to lead to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. Like you said, it's like you're almost in this constant state of amazement at each step where you're like, I can't believe I'm talking to this person. I can't believe we're all talking together. I can't believe I'm writing a chapter in this book with these people. I can't believe I'm speaking on this stage and it just goes on and on and on. It's 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 really quite lovely and quite powerful. And sometimes I think we were talking a little bit before um I hit record. Sometimes you just kind of hold on and go along for the ride. <laughs> I mean, if there was ever a time, you know, this this is one of those situations where uh, when you talk to people about just for their own growth and their own, um, you know, mindset and, and just kind of having a perspective is that there's some things in life that happen that are great that you couldn't have planned, you couldn't have done, and you had no control over the way things got connected. You could start the process, but how it plays out sometimes is not in your control. And this was a very good example of that. And the fact that, you know, um, you just have to, as opposed to um, uh, believing what you see, sometimes you have to learn to see what you believe. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's really the case here is that, you know, I believe this things like this could happen. And, it's, it's, and then at some point, you know, Whatever you want to call it, the ultimate intelligence, the quantum field, the <laughs> or whatever makes some things happen that you couldn't do on your own. And that actually makes it even more enjoyable. It really does. And it's it's like at, and putting that belief into action, really centering it in your life is what allows you to be ready to say yes when mm -hmm. the when when things start to happen. Because that's what I think where a lot of people will will trip up or fall short or miss the boat, so to speak, is they won't really, like they'll have an idea, they'll have a belief, but it's 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 very passive, it's very inactive. And it's, they don't, cause they don't really fully believe it or they haven't really fully embraced it. And when you, when you believe something and you construct that belief and you begin to put it in action and you really center it in the way that you're pursuing your passions and going about building your business and constructing your life, it makes you more ready to say yes when the big questions come around and the big opportunities present themselves. Well, even then, you know, like when I when I have clients and uh, and talking to them, and you know, I'll bring topics up, and and I'll even kind of address their objections ahead of time, and to say, okay, says I know that the one I'm going to talk about now, you already heard about, you probably read stuff about it, and whatever else, and and a, a good example of that would be mindset. And I go, they'll kind of roll their eyes, and I'm going, so if in fact mindset being what it is, um and you're not getting the results that you want, what do you think is the difference? And the bottom line is, is that knowledge does not mean wisdom. And the other thing is that you can know a lot about a lot of things, but until you internalize that and own it, it's not going to go anywhere and serve you the way that you want to be served. And so it's a matter of you need to take it and say, okay, you know, I own that. And, um, and I, in, in going to internalize the, the concept of me being doing something or me acting or me performing or whatever, or having certain successes and experiences. And at that point, that's when things start, magic starts to happen. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think it's, it's wrong to term it as magic because it, it really does. It really does feel like that. Cause it's, it's, it, it almost, I was going to say it, it, it's kind of a, I, I like the term magic here because it almost surpasses understanding and it tends to be very simple. And you like you look back on it and you're like, 
it's like we were talking a little bit about this too before I record those those oh duh moments or oh of course moments or the you know I should have known or could have known or whatever happens to be when you're looking back in hindsight. But when you're in the middle of it, there, there's a mystery to it as it's happening, and it, it honestly it, it can feel and be quite magical. And I don't think we should be afraid to say it like that sometimes when it, when the feeling's right, when the magic is popping. <laughs> I think that oddly enough, it's like there's almost like when you do experience it when it possibly was something that something by somebody else or some, and when I say your higher power has done for you, it's almost more enjoyable than if you'd have done it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're and, part of something. Yeah. Part of them. And in fact, that someone blessed you with this opportunity, as opposed to it all being your pump and grind stuff, you know, and there's no like, man, I like that. I do. Oh. I do. I don't always like being the center of my own story. <laughs> it feels <laughs> it feels a little inaccurate sometimes, a little disingenuous sometimes. <laughs> it also feels somewhat like you got a safety net too. You know, you got somebody out there on your own behalf, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, um, there's someone that can kind of help you pick up the pieces and is kind of watching you from the 30,000 foot view while you're down here below the clouds, you know, puffing up dust. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, It sounds like me when I go for a run, puffing up dust. <laughs> Well, talk to me a little bit. I know we, I've, we've already been talking for a little while, but I kind of want to know a little bit about this, about this chapter in this book you wrote. I mean, obviously, you know, 3000 plus words is quite a, quite an accomplishment, quite an endeavor on its own. Um, and I don't want you to give the whole thing away for free, but I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about, about the the main crux of your chapter in this book and what you really focus on. Yeah. The name of the chapter is the per your personal success structure. And, mm -hmm. um, and really it focuses on you being the best you can you can be before you start putting yourself out there for whether whether you're asking for something, whether you're expecting something, um, whether you um, have a certain ideas that that you would like to see come to fruition, whatever. But it's like um, the one thing that people desire most is control, and when they lose control, that's when people get frantic. Well. Mm -hmm. What happens is, is that when your success structure, your personal success structure is in place, then what happens now is you have the control to make good decisions, to make proactive decisions. You come from a point of a resourceful mindset versus being a resourceless mindset. Hmm. And, and then when, when, when you do that, then all of a sudden it's like stuff comes to pass. The, the biggest issue that the thing that one thing that we can control is us. There's a lot out there that, that, that we think that we can control, but the reality is ultimately that's not the case. And so we can influence things for certain outcomes, but control them is a totally different story. But for, for us, that's a different deal. So the idea of um, us being really, um, clear on sort of what makes us unique and the reality that no one can do us as well as we can do ourselves and, and to capitalize on that. And the best part is it doesn't cost you a dime. And so that structure is you need the personal success structure before you can have a, a, a business success structure. You need it before you can have a relational success structure. You need all of this. No one's going to love you more than you love yourself. And so um, it comes down to whether it be a, a partner, a relationship, or whether it be your, your clients and your customers. No one's going to trust you more than, you, than the clarity that, and, and the trust that you have in yourself or how much you love yourself is how much they're going to love you. And so the whole piece is a matter of, you know, we are born with a certain um, number of gifts that are ours and we're put here for a purpose. And then, and you can see I'm, 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 based, I'm a faith-based person and that, um, and I don't think there's anybody out there that you ever ask that say, you know, um, so do you think you were put here for a reason or just put here out of chance? <laughs> well, everybody would love to think that they're here for a reason. Well, if that's the case, then wouldn't it be nice to find out what it is? And so part of finding out what it is, is looking at 
what it is that drives you, what is that motivates you. We talk about motivators, you know, um, and there and what people don't separate many times is the difference between or the distinguish between internal motivators and external motivators. Mm-hmm. You know, we all want to have the external motivation of I want to go on vacation, I want the big car, I want the nice house, I want this, that, and another. But the internal motivators are the things that come from just really being comfortable and and in our own skin. And mm-hmm. So when you have that, that you can get up and you can just, when people start talking good junk in your ear and when you see stuff that, you know, pulls you away from, you know, really what you're designed to do, you have the ability to say, no, thank you. And I've had enough of that. I know what direction I'm heading and this is what feels good to me. And this is where I want to be. And if you can spend your life and time functioning uh, 75, 80% of your time in the in the things that you do best and easily and you can do with your eyes closed and better than anybody else Mm. life is pretty sweet and really does and when you can get at that point in your personal life then transferring that into a business it's like i've been there done that before i can make this work when it comes Mm. into a relationship i've been there done that before i can make this work and it's a power that people leave on the table so many times when the reality is it's there for you to grab now and it's free. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's ready. It's not like it's, it's, it's it, there's going to be work because there's always work for worthwhile things, but it's, it's there. It's available. Again, there's, there's, there's little, there's little to no barrier between you and that, and that power. It's just That's a matter hard. of realizing it. And then, you know, taking those first couple steps towards it. I love, I love this approach so much because so often people go the opposite direction where they start out try they start out like reading books or trying to find out what's made someone else successful someone else some other business an organization a person and then they try to just superimpose that onto their own life they're like let me just follow this person's recipe to cook to bake my cake you know yeah, to cook my yeah. meal yeah and and then they, it goes down so many roads like that the imposter syndrome especially as one of them starting with and i i really appreciate this personal success structure a lot of people think about a lot about what a success a success structure will look like. They forget the personal part, though, and how again, and you you explained it, you describe it so beautifully. How finding those things that you're good at, you're passionate about, that come easier to you. That again, they're still going to require work and they require development, but they're they're yours. It's your personal power. Mm-hmm. If you start there, that is your firm foundation upon which you can build whatever you'd like to build, whatever your, your business relationships, whatever it happens to be. Your yes gets stronger, your no gets stronger, both of them in equal measure, both of them at your disposal to use when you know that the time is right, when the opportunity is right or wrong, depending. Everything about what you're moved, what you're doing as you're moving through your life becomes more firm, becomes stronger, becomes more certain in a way that doesn't limit you, in a way that actually expands what's possible. I just I I think it's something, it's it's a way to look at it, a way to perceive this that i feel like so many people get opposite of how they should which is why it's kind of why i'm getting excited about you talking about it. i'm like oh this is great i don't hear this perspective very often in a way that i think is as powerful as this is so i'm pretty excited about this chapter <laughs> one of the things that i tell people early on when i when we start working with them i said you know most people are, are going to come to work with me to see what they can gain positively gain obviously in their lives or in their business or whatever and i said the reality is the biggest gain you're going to get probably is what you get to let go of Mm -hmm. let go of stuff then you get to spend the time all more of your time in the things that you get to keep that you choose to keep and so and and when and that's where and i have There's not one person I've worked with that after we finally, they kind of have that aha moment that at some point in our conversation, our relationship, they go, you know, to be honest, I really had no idea that it would be like this. (laughs) And then they'll say it in their own version or way. But the thing is, is like, they just go, wow, if I'd have only known, you know, I can't believe that. You know, I knew things could be better. I knew things could be different or whatever, but I didn't know they would be like this. It's kind of like, this is, it's like a big surprise to them, but it's this comforting, calming, and also in in rejuvenating aha moment that they have 
that they're going like, holy smokes, I had just had no idea. <laughs> you almost feel yourself when you're saying it, it's almost, you're, you almost feel yourself standing up straighter. It's like, yeah. I had no idea. And you could do like, uh, obviously there, there are different ways to say that. Like, I have no, I had no idea. And like, you could feel the weight of it when it's like something you didn't know that was, you know, going down a different path. But when you're, when you realize how good it can be, I love, and honestly, that, that that's the kind of terminology you almost feel corny. You're like, holy smokes. If there's like, I, it's like, I didn't even know. And I could, like, as, you, as you're saying it, you could feel like the weight lifting and your shoulders get nice and straight. And that, that first breath after you realize what's possible is so cleansing. And again, you, you said it perfectly, invigorating. There's so, there's, it's, so, it's so enervating. You get so much energy from it and so much calm yeah. and peace around it. And it's like, it, it sounds, I mean, depending on where you are, it might sound kind of impossible, but it's 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 there for you. It, it genuinely is there for you, and I I love that I love that that's where you're you're focusing your energy and your efforts because I feel like that's a message people need to hear. And I think a lot of people, um, no, not a lot. Everybody comes in with their own level of stress or anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, when they start out, because they they're like, okay, you know, we'll see what happens. The proof is in the pudding, you know, and whatever else. And, and then when they finally have their moment, and it is their moment, um, I don't give that to them. I guide them through a process that allows them to become aware of what they've failed or chosen not to look at for the longest period of time for whatever reason. But the bottom line is, and we all have been there at some point, and, but when they finally figure out their aha moment, that is truly theirs. I mean, it, it's like you can just see the air exit. <laughs> I that's a cool moment. Just, it's 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 what it's it's the moment that so many coaches live for. It, and there's really nothing quite like it to be a part of that for someone else. Yeah. I just happened. My eyes darted up to the Zoom clock. We've already been talking for over a half an hour. I just completely got lost, it, with, that, which is one of, again a delightful surprise. <laughs> yeah, but before I let you go, I do want I, I should let you go, but before I do, I want to make sure that people who are listening know where to find out, like when I mean when the book's going to be available. When I know you have some speaking engagements coming up that are around this, when, like roughly when those will be, and more importantly, where people can go to find out when you have firm dates and firm locations for all this stuff that's happening. So yeah, let us know where to where people can find out more. <laughs> okay. Yeah, probably the best place is going to be my LinkedIn page. Mm -hmm. And um, that as far as I'll, it'll be posted on there. Um, I know that I kind of keep everybody up to speed on, on that spot. Um, and then um, I have uh, conversations on a regular basis and about, in a, you know, the chapters were all completed. And we now have the fact that we have the covers to be able to do this. That just was as of about two days ago. So now there's updates to be made and things to availability and stuff like that. And the other one is too, is that, you know, um, for people that have an interest in, in not only the things we talked about today, but a lot of other people that are in the same general field of conversation, mm -hmm. Um, that sounds something of interest to you. Um, uh, be glad you can leave me your email address and say, I want one, or I'm, I'd like to have a copy of the book and I'd be glad to send you a free copy. Lovely. All right. We'll, we'll make, we'll make LinkedIn the one-stop shop for all the latest information and news and updates. And if anybody wants to reach out and connect, they can just yes. connect with you there, DM you, leave their email address and ask for, ask email for more. Address phone number they have a calendar on there whatever they have that's also whatever they can want to do they can they can do that but uh uh interested in their thoughts their opinions and you know whatever they have to say but uh would love to just for the opportunity of having them maybe listen to us uh jabber for a half an hour that you know be glad <laughs> to give them a, a gift that um i would personally like to see but then again i'm a human behavior nut so but someone else would <laughs> like it i'd love to give them a copy Oh, that sounds great. I like the I like the phrase human behavior nut. That, yeah. I, I, I can I connect with that phrase quite a bit. <laughs> that was for a long time. Well, Rich, this has been delightful once again, unsurprisingly so. Um, I think maybe I'll have to have you come back on more closer in the summer and like get your perspective from after the release and all this stuff has been happening. Just and also because you know, personally, you know, selfishly, I enjoy your I enjoy your conversation and I enjoy your company. So thank you for coming back on the pod and, and sharing all this. It's pretty exciting stuff. 
Yeah, it is. I, I, I'll say that for myself as well. I, it's a, it's a bless, you know, yes. uh, a blessing anyway. But yeah, so thank you. I appreciate that. Truly my pleasure. And to the audience, I mean, you've been listening. You know what to do. But just in case, I'll remind you once again, head to his LinkedIn. It's really easy to find. I think it's, well, I'll have the link to it in the show notes for sure. But I'm pretty sure if you just search Rich Stefan on LinkedIn, you'll find it first first selection. Find out all you need to know about the upcoming book and the chapter he has in it, everything he has to say, everything he has to share, teach, guide, offer, and quite frankly, bless you with. So definitely go there and definitely come back here again in, well, whenever the next episode airs, which might be tomorrow. It might be in a couple of days. At this point, we've got so many. I'm, I'm, we might just go to five days a week. I don't, know, I don't, I don't want to tease anything that's not going to happen yet, but nevertheless, we will talk to you again here very soon.